Hello and welcome back to the Immigrant Programmers channel. My name is Kritika and recently I've had a life-changing experience. So don't worry, this video won't be about my life experiences or like any psychological tip that I want to give you. I'm still a coder. So this video will be about a library that I recently discovered which completely changed the way I code. So this library is called Async. And as you can see, the weekly downloads for this library is around 34 million plus downloads per week. So, I mean, it's a really huge thing. So in this video, I'm going to cover, I'm going to cover two major functions that I use for this library, um, which are like really, really useful. So, um, without wasting any time, let's get coding. And I'm going to show you those two functions that I use a lot. So the first function is parallel. So async.parallel, what is that? What it does is, so it runs the task or the task could be a collection of functions and it could be like anything. It could be an array, it could be an object or an iterable, anything. And basically you just have to like call, uh, put functions inside it. So it's gonna be a collection of functions and it can run all those functions parallelly. Yes, so all those functions, irrespective of what they do or if they're connected with each other or not or whatever, they're gonna run parallelly. And as soon as you get the response, as soon as each of the function functions, so basically they end their execution, you're gonna get a response back. And the response will be an array. And in that array, you're gonna have the individual responses for each of, from each of the functions. Or in case of an error, so if any one of the function um, uh, basically sends an error to the callback, it's going to call the main callback with the error. OK, so enough of chit chat. I'm going to show you how to code it. It will be easier for you to understand like that. So I have my uh, parallel method here. But before that, just a small note. So this time for the, uh, for the purpose of demonstration of this uh, library, I'm using StackBlitz. And StackBlitz is a new, um, basically, online code editor that I got to know about in the Google I.O. event. So this is much faster as compared to Replit because like Replit runs the code on their server and then it returns you a response. So like that includes some latency. So this basically what StackBlitz does is it runs code in your browser. So yes, you can now run Node.js on your browser. So thanks to Google and StackBlitz. All right, try it out and let me know how you find it, how it uh, works for you. So it's called stackblitz.com. Okay, so moving back to the parallel method that we were discussing. Now, what I did is I created a collection which was like array of functions. I'm gonna pass in uh, uh, three functions, but like right now, I just have like two of them to show you the uh, success case. And then I'm gonna show you the error case as well. So first of all, what I does is I pass, I pass like um, two functions. So the first one returns a promise. And the second one also returns a promise. And then after these functions have completely executed, I'm going to come here in my then block and I'm going to get a response. And as, as I told you already, the response will be an array containing the responses from individual responses from each of the functions. And in case of an error, I'm catching the error. So the code is pretty simple. And let's just execute it and see what happens. All right, so as you can see, I have my response, like and share. Now, what's gonna happen if I run my error case? Wait, I forgot a comma here. Okay, let's give it another try. Okay, so as I told you, even if a single function fails, so it's going to come to the uh, catch block immediately and it's going to return the error. So 
as you can see, my promise was rejected with an error value dislike. And the, here, my error value is present uh, is printed, and I have the error in the response. But what you can do to avoid this situation is you can wrap your functions in async using async dot reflect keyword. So if I just wrap my functions here using async dot reflect, what it will do is it's gonna keep on even if there is an error returned by any one of the functions, it's going to keep on executing all the three functions and it's going to return the response when all the three functions have it executed. So um, let's see. OK, so now your response object doesn't contain the individual um, individual strings of responses, but now it contains like three individual objects. So these are the values that were returned by the first two functions. And this is the error value returned by the third function. But now it waited for all the three functions to continue to uh, complete their execution. So that's just a workaround, the async.reflect. All right. So we now know how parallel works, how async.parallel works. I'm going to show you another function that I use a lot, which is so async.for each. Now here, it has ba it basically has like different uh, different types, and there you can use like different parameters here. But we're going to use it with the limit because this is the most useful one. At least I find it the most useful. So what it does, what it does is, it's going to take a collection again. So it can take an iterator, as you can see, uh, array, object, anything. And then it will iterate over each of the elements of that collection. And it's going to apply a function or like any operation that you want to do over like each of the each of the um, index or like each of the item present inside that iterable or like that collection. And it's going to apply that function individually to each of them. And also handle synchronous code asynchronously. Let's see how. Uh, OK, I'm going to go back to my. Uh, so uh, this is the for each function. We're going to use it with a limit. So it has various, uh, it has different variations. You can check out the documentation and see a different type if you want to use that. So what we're basically going to do is my collection would be an array of numbers. And now I'm going to fetch a URL and uh, return the response. So I am basically um, pushing the response or like saving the response on in an array. And I would like to just print all the responses here at the end when the complete loop or the iteration is over. So right now, this is the limit field that um, for each of limit variation uses. So this basically tells you how many threads you want to run in parallel. But if for a demonstration, I change it to one. So if I change it to one, I'm just going to run like one uh, element in parallel, right? So this is like equivalent to running it synchronously. So it should now I've also put like a set time out here. And uh, I have given it a sleep time of one second into the index so that I know when I change the limit here, I will know if my uh, function worked like synchronously. So if uh, it did some spreading, like it did some uh, parallel requests or not, because right now when I change it to one, it is equivalent to running synchronously. So what happens is um, it should take, I think, uh, let's do the calculation, OK? So for the first iteration, the index will be 0 and 1 second into 0. So it will run immediately in 0 seconds. But for the second index, it's going to take 1 second, then 2, 
three seconds and four seconds. So four plus three plus two plus one. So it should take 10 seconds for the first, uh, first exercise that we're going to do with the limit one. OK, let's run this code and see if what we're thinking is correct. Also, if I haven't uh, mentioned it before, we're going to come to this den block and this catch block as soon as the complete loop, as soon as like the uh, work that we're doing here has been completed. So like when we have traversed all the elements in the array. OK, so we're here now. And we have the results. So First of all, let's make sure that it did take 10 seconds to get executed. And now the results is the result is again an array. Because here, as you can see, I did put my response in an array. I stored my response in an array. And how we can make sure that the responses are different is by checking the ID. So the ID is one, then two, then three, four, five. So there are five individual responses. And it took 10 seconds because this was, so I just put the limit as one. So we were just uh, processing one element at a time. This was not happening in parallel. And it took 10 seconds. Okay, just to prove that I'm right and it will. Now, when I change the limit to two, two elements will be processed in parallel. I'm going to change the limit to two. And now the time the time should be, uh, the execution time should be less than 10 seconds for sure, because we're doing it in parallel. And we're processing multiple requests uh, at the same time. So if I clear it, and I'm going to run it again. So I'm going to see the response as soon as the complete uh, array has been processed. All right. And there you go, six seconds. And again, I have five individual responses. Awesome. So this proves that we did execute the second time we did execute it in parallel. Now you can change this limit to any number that you want, and it's going to work. Now, there is a question that, that popped into my mind when I started working with uh, for a each off limit and the parallel method. What's the difference between the parallel method and the for each of limit? OK, so the difference is that in the for each of limit, yes, you are executing stuff in parallel. You are implementing parallelism, but you are, you are basically um, performing the same kind of operation in all the, all the elements inside your collection. So they're not different operations. I mean, you're performing the same kind of operation on all the elements inside your collection, but you're performing them parallelly. But, and also uh, using for each of limit, you can put like a limit and you can control parallelism. So you have a control, right? So when you work with uh, APIs and stuff, you, you usually have a throttling limit. So you don't want uh, to have like too much parallelism and too much request to go per second because like there is generally a throttling limit. I'm going to pass that throttling limit and crash the server basically, but you don't want to do that. So you want to have control over your parallelism. But using the other method, using the other uh, method, which was the async.parallel method, first of all, we were, we were, um, implementing different kinds of functions and like we were doing different processes, they were not related to each other. They're, they're being executed in parallel, but it, one function is not related to the other. It could be anything. Okay, so I hope you understood the difference. And if you have further questions, you can ask it in the chat. And let me open the chat. Okay.
Well, Pranath has a question. What if the limit is five? We could try that as well. Okay. So we put the limit as five. So what do you think will happen now? It will, the entire array would be processed in just one iteration. So in ju just one request, right? Because the limit is five and the number of uh, elements that we have inside the array would be, is five as well. So let's see. So yes, you see it's that fast. We don't even see the time here because like it was that fast. All the five elements were processed in one shot because the, yes, instant execution. Because like all the, uh, because the limit was five and there was just five elements. So basically all of them got executed instantaneously. All right. Okay, so if I wanna show you the, and also I think I forgot to mention the fetch method that I used uh, to fetch the API URL was from this NPM library, which is pretty huge in itself because it has like around 17 million downloads per week. So this is called node fetch. So you could just NPM install node fetch and then use the fetch method here after requiring it, of course. All right. So I guess I've covered pretty much everything that I wanted to cover today. So I hope, uh, cause like it's a really, really uh, useful library and I really find it re uh, very useful and I've been using it a lot so far. So I just wanted to share it with you guys. I hope you found, uh, you found this information valuable and useful. So thank you so much for watching and um, I'm gonna put the link to my uh, to all my stack blitz and my GitHub repo down in the description below. I'm gonna I'm also gonna put a link to the documentation. So as I already showed you, uh, this is the documentation for the uh, npm async library. And you can there it it has a lot many methods. It it basically count. It can have a tutorial in itself, like a because like this is. This is so huge. It's a humongous library. It has so many methods. You can go around and uh, play around and like uh, check each of the methods if you want to. So these, what I showed you were the two most useful methods so far that I found. So I hope it was helpful. Thank you so much for being with me here and making it till the end of the video. Have a great uh, evening, night, morning, whatever your time zone is and like, share, subscribe to the channel. Thank you and have a good day, bye.